think we're going to go ahead and get started now. So aloha, everyone. I am Brandon Smith. I'll be your orientation leader for today's session, which is advising for transfer students. Before we get started, I'll be covering some housekeeping items for today's webinar. So first, you should be able to hear me clearly. If you cannot, uh, please note that so we can troubleshoot with you. Uh, make sure to check the audio, make sure it's connected on the Zoom window. Uh, turn up your computer volume or use external headphones if there's audio issues. Second, please utilize the uh, Q&A function if you have questions for the presenters or about anything that was shared. Um, we are going to try to save all questions for the end of the presentation though. Finally, after the session, we'll be uploading the recordings of this webinar to the Visit Days platform in the videos section. And we will also have it on the UH Manoa um, playlist for all the orientation webinars that have been going on. And all these recordings will have closed captioning as well. So now I'm going to hand it over to one of today's presenters, Jennifer Brown. She is a wonderful transfer specialist. Hi, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as Brandon mentioned, my name is Jennifer Brown, and I'm a transfer specialist here at Manoa. My colleague, Melissa Jones, is presenting with me today. Um, I'm going to get us started. So we wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about um, what academic advising is, who your advisors are, and how to find them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about transfer uh, of your credits. How do you know what transferred? How do you read the documents that the university creates for you around that? Um, we're going to share some tips on how you can make best use of your advising relationship. And then we're also going to have some time for question and answers today. So, what is academic advising and how will I work with an advisor during college? So I like to encourage my students to think of us as um, kind of like a navigator or a liaison of sorts. So your advisors can really help you make the most of your time during college. Um, but it is a really truly a relationship. And the more that you are prepared and things like that, the better um, use you'll get out of that, that time. So what do advisors do? And probably many of you had advisors or maybe counselors on your previous campus, depending on where, um, how that campus was structured. But essentially advisors assist students with developing and progressing towards their academic and career goals. Um, we are also fonts of resources and referrals, so we'll connect you with the appropriate places based on your needs and also your interests. And again, I mentioned this is a partnership and information is really shared between the student and the advisor, which is to help you make well informed and appropriate choices. In the courses that you take at UH Manoa, learning happens when you make meaning of the content taught by your faculty and professors. Um, as you do this, you're learning, growing, and building connections on new knowledge and skills, right? So this is kind of how all, everything comes together. Um, in advising, it's similar. Um, essentially, you know, many students ask, why do they have to take courses? And academic advisors will help you find that correct place, that right major for you and also help you understand the meaning of how the curriculum comes together um, and why different courses are kind of included. And lastly, we do help prepare for life after graduation, connecting you with resources that are necessary to do so. Okay. Um, some students are looking for a career to apply the knowledge that has been gained or thinking about applying to professional programs or graduate school. And we can help you with making those connections and getting you set up to continue on for life after graduation. So the idea is that your academic advisor can really help you in making meaning of your whole UH Manoa experience. So kind of pulling everything together. Now, who are my academic advisors? So there are actually a whole different, several different types of advisors. And depending on your major, your school or college, um, maybe if you participate in a, a, another program, maybe like the honors program or something like that, you might actually have three or four, maybe even more advisors that you're going to work with. Okay. 
So as I mentioned, we do have schools and colleges. So we have 13 colleges and schools that offer undergraduate degrees. Here's the list of them. Um, and we, we bring this up because it is important to understand that it can look a little different in each place, right? So for example, in the Scheidler College of Business, um, students will have a business advisor who's their school advisor that will work with them kind of on the whole of everything once they're in the business school. Whereas a student who's majoring in English in the colleges of arts, languages, and letters, they're actually gonna have an English major advisor and also a college advisor. And so some of it, um, some of who your advisors are depends on what you're pursuing. We also want to take a moment today to encourage you to check your star account and make sure that your major is listed correctly. This is incredibly important because it does connect you to the appropriate um, school or college and the appropriate advisor. It also helps you in building an accurate academic plan. Um, so, a, you know, star is our technology component that helps with advising and helps you find the right courses. Um, it's also really important for using financial aid or veterans affairs benefits if you're using those types of um, funding to support your schooling, you really want to make sure that your uh, major is de declared appropriately because those uh, sources of funding have to make sure that you're pursuing the correct classes. Some schools and colleges require additional admissions requirements. So for example, I use business as one, engineering, and you'll see these different designations. So the EX stands for exploratory. Um, so EXSS is exploratory social science, EXB is exploratory business. And then we have some pre's as well. So for nursing and engineering, there's a pre-major that you then change over to the full nursing or civil engineering um, or mechanical engineering once you've completed the prerequisites. Um, you should see the advisor for your intended major. And I mentioned exploratory students before. Um, we do have an office called the Manoa Advising Center, which works with exploratory students um, to help you get towards major declaration. So I've started kind of talking about this a bit, but there are some uh, several advising models going on at Manoa. So there's the student academic services model. That's where your college or school advisor. These are professional advising staff responsible for overall advising. Um, then we have faculty or major advisors. So like the English example that I gave, um, the, the English faculty advisor is a faculty member in English who's teaching classes, but also has advising as part of their um, areas of responsibility, and they're really going to work with you in depth on the major if you have uh, a major advisor in this model. Then there's the special group advising. So um, I did mention honors as an example, but also student athletes um, have academic advisors that work specifically with them. Uh, Pre-professional, so we have a pre-health, pre-law um, advising office, and for students who are working towards professional school, they can work with that advising office for assistance. Okay, so again, lots of different kinds of advisors. And now I'm going to hand it over to Melissa. Good morning. So I'm Melissa Jones, and I am a transfer specialist as well. So thank you for joining us. I'm going to start talking a little bit about how you can prepare for your advising sessions. So your advising appointments should really be more than just scheduling your classes. We wanna know more about you and your interests. And the more we know, the better we're able to advise you. So we've kind of outlined some discussion questions that you can think about during your advising appointments, things that you would wanna share with us. We wanna know about you and how you like your classes or what is it that you like and what is it that maybe you aren't enjoying about your classes as well. Um, how are your college classes different from your high school classes or your previous transfer institution classes? What kind of strategies are you using to do well? So tell me about what you are excited about or what you're passionate about. Um, we just want to learn more about you and the more we learn, the better we can help you. So we also want to know, are you having fun? Um, what are the things that you're enjoying in your classes? Um, have you been involved in UH beyond your classes? Okay, we can. Okay, so mandatory advising. Some of you may already have noticed that you might have a hold on your STAR account for mandatory advising. 
So holds will be placed by units who require mandatory advising, and it's going to depend on your individual advising office. So make sure to check your star for a hold. Um, if you do have a hold for mandatory advising, you want to get in and schedule an appointment right away to get that hold removed. And mandatory advising may be initial or maybe each semester. So you just want to check with your advising unit. So how do I find my academic advisors? Okay, so some of you may have already stumbled across our advising guide. So we do have the URL here, or you can do a quick search on our website for advising guide, and this should be the first one that pops up. Um, our advising guide outlines each major, so you can search by major or category and find your individual unit. So the advising guide will also include information about office hours, types of appointment, it even includes information about mandatory advising, and if it's a requirement. Um, you can also find your um, special population advisors at the very bottom of the advising guide page. So if you are in honors or VA, you can also find that information on the advising guide as well. And then of course, to schedule your appointments, you would schedule through, that's okay, <laughs> through Star Balance. Okay. And how do I know what transferred? So if you already, paid your tuition deposit, turned in your official transcripts, you may have received your official transfer credit evaluation. So the transfer credit evaluation is done by the admissions office. Once your evaluation is complete, you should have received an email with um, directions on how to view your evaluation. So you will view your evaluation on STAR. So there's some instructions here, that's okay. Um, you should get it in your email as well, but this is a copy of what your evaluation looks like. So it will show you a summary of your transfer work and it will include the institutions that they did an evaluation for and then the total number of transferable credits. Um, on the left-hand side, it will break down the transfer institution and all of the courses. And on the right-hand side, it will show you the MANOA equivalent class. So in some cases, you may receive credit for an exact equivalent. So English 101 here was equivalent to English 100 at UH MANOA, or you may receive diversification credit. Um, and then in other cases, you might see a request for either a SIL or a description. Um, in those cases, the admissions office needs a little bit more information. So they're requesting a copy of the course syllabus or description. Um, once you have a copy of that, either from your records or you can contact your previous institution for that information, you want to send that via email to the Office of Admissions. In that same email that they sent you, they should have included their informa um, email information of where to send your course description or course syllabus. Um, it'll also indicate here the number of credits that are received. You'll notice that on the left-hand side, it will show your actual grades. But on the right-hand side, Manoa doesn't transfer in grades. They only transfer in your course equivalent and credit. So we can go ahead. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about your responsibilities as a student. So as a student, we do suggest that you seek advising on a regular basis. So at least once a semester, just to check in, make sure you're on track, um, learn your office's appointment scheduling type. So right now, you know, we're doing a lot of Zoom, but some offices may be seeing students um, in person or do drop-in hours, virtual drop-in hours. So you want to make sure that you know, you know, how your individual advising unit operates um, and how and when you can schedule your appointments. 
try your best to avoid busy periods. So if you know registration is coming up soon, don't wait until registration is open. Try to make an appointment early on. Beat the rush and get in early um, so you can get everything taken care of. Bring a list of questions or concerns. So kind of going back to those discussion points, like think about um, what it is that you wanna ask, what you wanna share, um, and the more prepared you are, the better we can assist you. Organize and retain handouts. Keep all documents in one folder. So whether that's a Google folder or an actual physical folder, just um, try to be organized with your information so that you don't have to um, kind of think back as to what you discussed in your appointment. You have it all there and you can just easily access it. Check your UH email on a regular basis. Um, your UH account is your official means of communication within the university. So anytime you're emailing someone within the UH system, um, it's best if you use your UH email account. As advisors, it's really helpful for us because we can just view your star using your, um, your email information for your UH email. Okay, um, use academic resources. So you should all be somewhat familiar with STAR. That's kind of gonna be your main resource um, to view your academic progress. But the catalog and program sheets are also really helpful tools um, that can provide information on policies and curriculum. Um, so we do suggest that you have those as well available. Check deadlines. We do have an academic calendar you might want to refer to as well for um, registration or drop periods. And you can add those to your personal Google calendar as well as um, kind of monitoring deadlines on your syllabus. A lot of us are doing um, online classes right now. So you want to make sure that you're well organized um, and know when all of your assignments are due. So make sure you're using your Google calendars. Follow through with recommendations and strategies discussed in appointments. So some of your advisors may give you homework assignments. So you just want to make sure that you're following through with those. Um, they're important in things that you need to complete. So make sure that you um, do follow through and listen to what your advisor is suggesting and then report back as well if necessary. And then lastly, take responsibility for actions and decisions. Okay, so making the most of your time at UH Manoa. So we do have a lot of resources that are available to you. Um, one of them being right now for our new student orientation, hopefully you've attended a lot of sessions already. Um, but if there's other ones that you haven't attended yet, you can always refer back to those videos as well if you missed those. Um, ask your advisors about opportunities within your school or college. So each school or college is going to have their own unique opportunities, so internships or scholarships. Um, so make sure that you ask about those types of things. Student organizations, we have lots of clubs, and this is a great way to meet people, build a network, um, gain leadership skills. So we do highly encourage you to, to get involved in any student organizations and your advisor can kind of assist you with finding those opportunities as well. Civic engagement and service learning. So volunteer work is a great way to start establishing your resume. Um, and, you know, also again, building a network, you know, if you plan on staying in Hawaii, it's a small community and it's always helpful to gain a good quality network. Um, Career Center, so our Career Center can assist you with your resume, writing a cover letter, just career exploration. So there's so much that the Career Center can offer. So these are just a few examples of various departments and resources that Manoa has, but we have so many more. So make sure that you ask your advisor about um, different opportunities that might help you out in your future as well. And I think that concludes our session. Um, but if we have any questions, we'd be happy to answer.
Well, I don't see any questions here, so I think we can start wrapping up. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today for this presentation. Um, hopefully there was some helpful information from uh, Dr. Melissa Jones and Dr. Jennifer Brown. If you have any more questions um, about anything at all, uh, you can email your orientation leader or nrwo at hawaii.edu for assistance. As mentioned, this webinar will be published on the NSO platform and on YouTube. So please visit that page for the recording as well as links or other documents mentioned by today's guests. Mahalo. Thank you, everyone.